We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Welcome to the Strong by Design podcast show. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And just a couple days ago, we released part one of our very special episode with guest Jason Milan, Never Give Up on Your Dreams. And this is the second half of the conversation with host Mike Westerdahl and our special guest, Coach Jason Milan. Hope you enjoy this second part. You know how many people that I have like pitched and they've told me no. And then years later, months later, days later, um, they've come and bought uh, programs for me just because they said no. Right. Now, like I literally flat out, somebody said, hell no, oh, that's too expensive. And, <laughs> and then like, uh, about a year later, they're like, well, uh, I've spent way more money and I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I'm ready. You know, uh, I had this one lady talking about price for a second. Um, when I was running my, my group on, she bought a $49 membership for me, you know, fast forward about seven years, uh, into running my online fitness business. We were doing pretty high ticket, you know, highish ticket. It was, we were doing three K programs just for, for fitness. It's pretty high ticket for most people. And, uh, I was like, she reached out to me. I'm like, There's no way this lady's going to pay me. She paid me 49 bucks. And back then she didn't really commit. Well, I told her, I was like, Hey, the program's three K, uh, you can pay 3K in full or you can do installment options of, you know, X, Y, Z. She was like, I'll do 3K in full. And she committed like, and I was just like, seven years went by and that price was like 3K was worth it to her. She was <laughs> because, you know, she tried the $49 thing um, and didn't work. But when she paid 3K, she was invested. <laughs> right. You got skin in the game. And I mean, yeah. same thing with fitness or really anything. If it's a free thing, people don't value it as much because it's, it's free. They think, uh, you know, whatever, I don't really have to do this. I didn't pay anything for it. It's got to hurt a little bit. You got to put some skin in the game, pay some money so that like you'll be accountable and actually do it. And having a coach and accountability, I mean, that's that's huge as well. Yeah, and a lot of people pay coaches, especially in the fitness space. Like people, are like what the heck were they giving you three k for? Well, they were giving me three k for having like access to me. And yeah, but these are people that don't have coaches and anything. Like every single business owner I know, and every, all the groups I'm in, like I don't know anybody who doesn't pay for coach. coaching of different types of coaching. Correct. It's like I've got multiple business coaches. I've paid for for faith coaching. We've gotten like family coaching. It's like there's obviously fitness coaching. There's video coaching from you. I mean, coaching, I consider it just consulting and getting better in these different areas of life well, that matter. But a lot of people would be like, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's like you you know, you got to look at it. I think it was what Albert Einstein said, you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that you're in. And so a lot of times we're trying to solve these problems whether it's weight loss, business growth, or whatever it may be, and when we're in a certain level of consciousness, we can't literally solve our problems. This is why so many people go into like fad diets or um they they try these get rich schemes on or these tactical things on you know, in business that, yeah, they may provide some short term solution, but they don't actually get you to the end goal because you're not really changing your stream of consciousness. You're not growing as a person. And a coach does that for you. A coach is your guide. It's like, I like to look at the, I like to use the scene of like the old school basketball coach walking up to the half court and then the player walks up to him and they meet each other halfway. The coach does not step over the line. The player doesn't step over the line, but they both meet. And that's really what great coaching is about. It's like you meet and then the coach helps guide that person on wherever they at. Like, where are you at right now? And it can be scary with a big investment like that. Was your first business coach Vince Domani? No, I, I, I've been doing business coach. I've been hiring coaches since like okay. 2015. Well, he was the first one I hired. I believe it was in like 2009. And that was the first time I paid because they didn't, that stuff didn't even exist when I was starting out. I, there was a couple like online, like binders you could buy on, on marketing and stuff. He was the first coach I hired and it was $10,000 at the time to join when I was like $10,000 in debt. So <laughs> sticking another 10,000 on a credit card, pretty scary to do, but 
just connecting with those people, what you were learning and just that collective kind of brain power of people getting mm-hmm. together, doing the same thing and helping each other out and working together versus having this like, I'm on my own, you're my competition mindset, which is where I was coming from, just out on an island doing my own thing, thinking everybody was out to get me. And I got into this group and it really opened up my eyes to this abundance thinking of like working together with people, helping people and uh, having a coach. And it was scary, but that year... That's when business really was a pivotal moment and things uh, totally took off. Yeah, when your environment changes and when you're around people that maybe have that, they, they, they already know the answers because they've been through the journey. It's like, hey, don't step there. <laughs> oh, thank you, coach. You but know? you know, it was a little easier than I feel like. It was a good timing because there wasn't like a ton of coaches. And and I knew him and I knew his background and his success where today it seems like there you got to be careful who you're getting coaching from because there's so many people out there coaching, but they didn't put the work in to maybe get their certifications, to study kinesiology, get their degrees, get all the work done, or if it's in business, have they run a business? Do they have any experience? It's like you don't want to get in with the wrong person. Do you have any tips for that? 100%. And I think this comes down to like a, like having – a, there's like staying in your lane, right? And then it comes down to like, what are your experiences? You know, and so there's two perspectives. So from, one from if somebody's looking at getting into coaching or if you're in coaching or running a coaching business and the other, if you're looking to get coaching, right? Where if you're the coach or if you're looking to get into coaching, like I tell people adamantly, do I know how to run a business? Yes. Am I a business coach? No. Like I consider myself a media coach. Like I, this is where I've spent my time. I have expertise here. I've had success here. I've generated now over 300 high ticket clients. People have paid me 3K and up for um, through video and, and social media. I feel pretty good at teaching people this because I've, I've done it, right? Um, am I the best at setting up systems? Not really. I still pay coaches to tell me, show me how to do that. And so I like to stay in my lane And I believe as a coach, it's like whatever you're trying to help people with fitness or whatever. It's like faith or relationships. It's like, what are you? What's your specialty in that area? Yeah, you can probably solve a lot more problems. But what can you like without a doubt be able to help people with? Right. Like when I'm helping right now with call to actions and hooks and things like that, it's like I without a shadow of a doubt. And I have a thousand percent confidence and conviction that I can do this because I've done it like so many times. And so. That's what I believe from like the coaching, but from the coach's perspective, or I'm sorry, from the consumer's perspective, it's really just kind of, um, a, just making sure the person has valid testimonials, right? It's the first thing I always look at personally is like, let me see some of these testimonials first. And I kind of always look, that's the buyer I am. I'm like, let me see if somebody else has done it. That's similar to me. Yeah. Um, and then I also pay attention to the coach's messaging. Right. I like really pay attention to I'll follow the person for a little bit. And I'm like, is their message incongruent or do they seem to be hopping to different topics all of the time? And if that's the case, like especially like this day and age, you see people hopping to teaching Facebook groups one week and the next week they're teaching YouTube ads. And now they're on TikTok. And it's like I'm all for evolution and for people like figuring out like, oh, this old way didn't actually work. Let's try this new way. But I always pay attention to that. Like, is your, is the, is the coach that you're trying to hire, whether it's with fitness, like, are they talking about intermittent fasting one week? And then, you know, maybe a month later, they're talking about like no intuitive eating. It's like, sure. I kind of pay attention to the messaging and do they stay congruent? Because if not, I lose trust. I'm like, I don't know if they know what they're talking about because they're always talking about different things. Uh, which as a coach, if you're running a business, it all comes down. This is something that I've learned the hard way is positioning. It's like being able to position yourself and, and communicate your offering through a powerful message, right? You know, in our gym, why didn't I just do what everybody else is doing and start opening boutique gyms? No, I positioned myself as the outdoor fitness center because it was about being different to me. It was about being different and providing something that people wanted that I knew people wanted in the community, um, in the online fitness business, I was the belly fat guy. Like I had, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I, got, I don't have an eight pack anymore. Right. But there's some, we'll, we'll slap a picture up in the video <laughs> yeah. so people can see. But when I was running my business, I made sure I was, I had a freaking eight pack. I was leading by example. I knew everything about the metabolism. Well, there's the keyword right there. Leading by example. 
when I'm looking for a business coach, I mean, there's specialty coaches, but I've also got a coach, uh, Randy Davis, that kind of helps with overall business planning, how to grow the business, either sell the business or automate the business. And I look at do the values and integrity line up with that coach? So a, does he have like a track record of doing what I'm trying to do? Like you don't want to hire a fitness coach who's never been in shape. Right. (laughs) So business coach, if you haven't like done this, then that's that's a flag. I'm not interested. And then do your values align with my values? Like, do you still value your health and uh, put your family first or um, are you ethical? You Mm -hmm. know, do you have faith? And, um, and it's actually kind of hard to find somebody that's got those, uh, qualities like in line that match up because otherwise you could be modeling the wrong person Mm -hmm. and you could wind up yeah maybe you get some results but at what expense 100 percent. yeah and that's a good point that you brought up too right it's like you see the um the 18 year old relationship experts and the the um you know the business coaches that they're they they barely cross 5k and i'm like how you know i'm not they each their own right i mean if you're a business coach that you you shouldn't be able to teach people how to get past like you say hey i can help you get to a 5k business <laughs> like, right you know what i mean or hey i, I can help you as a, if you're an 18 year relationship coach it's like hey i can help you um this is just my opinion right no i agree and, it, and you don't want to say like you're the seven figure coach but you've never helped anybody including yourself get past six figures you can't correct. be the, the eight figure coach if you've and it's just owning right. it's owning who where you're at there's no right and wrong like life is and about maybe growth. you could though like you know i've I used to compete in powerlifting and I benched 600 something. Could I get somebody to 700? Yeah. Probably, like, right? But I haven't personally done it. Yeah. But Bill Belichick and, hasn't thrown like 100 touchdown passes either. And I also believe like you could teach something that you have done, but I don't believe you. I, and this is opinion. This is just my belief. So some, you can agree or disagree, but I feel like until you've done something multiple times, you shouldn't be able to uh, to be an expert on it. Right. So like this is our first year we're going to like actually have an official million dollar business. You know, I've been high. I've I've, I've been a uh, high seven or high six figures, you know, nice mid six job. figures. Um, and this will be the first year we'll cross over that. Do Am I going to go out and be like, here's how to get to seven figures? No, because it's taken me a decade to figure this thing out. Right. Like I, I like I got to like sit and think about my like frame. Like what did I. All right. Here's how I did. Here's what I did with my team. Here's like but I'm not going to go teach it. Right. I'm going to continue to say like, hey, I've crossed this. This and th- this is right. But it's like, can I talk about video sales? Yeah, because this is what we've done. We've been teaching live video. I've been using live video. We've been using video. We've been using speaking communication. Um for a long time, right? Well, let's dive into a few tips for video. What are what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people making with their live videos or online videos, regardless of platform, if they've got a business or a fitness business? What are some of the biggest mistakes you're seeing? Man, uh, there's there's quite a few, but I would say the first one is um, kind of what we're just talking about, and it's more of a general mistake, but it's still important to bring up. It's make sure that you're speaking your authentic message, right? Not what you see other people are doing. And I know this is very common because I myself was very guilty of this, especially being in masterminds and other programs to where... Sometimes you, it does. It feels like everyone's doing the same thing, or you find someone who's good and everyone starts copying them. Exactly. And I was doing that for a while. I was copying other people's message, not to like plagiarize or anything, but like when you see something working, you naturally want to do it. Or model, yeah. Yeah. And what ends up happening is you don't, it doesn't come across the same way to your audience, right? Versus like if you speak on something that you are passionate on, but you're not, well, like let's back up for a second actually to put some context here. The first thing is, you got to, especially when you're starting off, you should have a very specific human being that you're building a, a, a program for or a product for, right? Like an avatar? Yeah. Like one person, sort of with one human, like people get so stuck into the niche thing where it's like, but I mean, you can be in a niche and the niche can have like, you know, five, six, seven different avatars, right? So from my experience, just focusing on one person. So if I want to make a program for you, I, w- I would like figure out what's your pains, what's your struggles, what's your symptoms, what's, what's your desire, what's going on in your life? What do you like? I would figure out that and I would create an offering for that person, 
right? And doing that, when you're out there communicating in your content, in your videos, in your advertising, whatever you're doing, it's going to hit harder for that person. It's going to also attract other people. And when you're doing the video, it's like you're talking to that person that you pictured mm-hmm. in your mind and that you built in your mind. Correct. And this, this works for anything, really. My son was in uh, second grade last year and did a project on tigers, and he had to talk for like three minutes on a, on a video I was taking with my iPhone, and um, he was stumbling up and couldn't quite, like, he knows everything about tigers. He didn't even have to, like, do the research. But he was getting nervous talking on there, not knowing how to say it, who he was talking to, and he was kept messing up. And I just told him, I said, listen, just pretend like I'm grandpa, and you're just telling me yeah. some stuff about the tiger that you know and then he just pictured me as his grandpa and he just told me a bunch of stuff about the tiger and the video was fine yeah but but like when he was trying to like talk to the teacher the class of the school like it got all messed up and that brings me to this next point which i see is a mistake so once you know who you're talking to right and you have you know what your program is designed to do right for example in my fitness business it was i help people lose up to 30 pounds of belly fat in 90 days were other people talking about that Sure, but this comes to this next piece. What most people are doing is teaching at their audience. All they do is teach. And this is something that worked really well five or 10 years ago, right? That was one of our lessons uh, right before the podcast (laughs) when you were reviewing some of our videos. Yeah. It's like too much teaching. Too much teaching. And you can get away with it a bit more on YouTube because it's a search engine driven platform, right? People are going to search for things. Some how to's. and Yeah. And so like you can get away with it more on 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 like YouTube and stuff. All right. And like Google. But even then, this day and age in 2022, content is a commodity, Content is a commodity, right? There's more. I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I, it's got to be close to true. And if it's not, it's still pretty believable to me. So I'm going to share it. Is that I've heard that there's more content, there's more information and messages being pushed out uh, with the rise of social media platforms in three hours today than there was from the dawn of time to the 1960s. There is just so much information. It's crazy, it's unbelievable, and it's just overload, and it's actually being detrimental. There's so much information out there. Yeah. So how do you stand out in a world where it's a commodity, it's everywhere? And that comes into... And at the same time, attention spans are shrinking and getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, three seconds. uh, Three seconds is slow. Wait, what are we talking about again? (laughs) That's the purpose of a good headline and hook. But even then, right? Like, and and by the way, a little side side digression here. Like, uh, 89% of people I read in a study... Uh, actually consume videos on their toilet. So you should right. pay attention to that. <laughs> no, I've, I've thought of that before. Are you sitting on the toilet for every one of your hooks? Right. <laughs> Shit, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am sitting on the toilet. Like, great. You're going to want to listen. Right. I've, I've heard that one before. It's like, <laughs> they're just scrolling on the toilet and they got to stop when they get to yours. Like, why are they going to stop? Yep. <laughs> Which kind of comes into this next phase. So if you're not going to teach at them all the time, and I do believe there's room for teaching, but if you're creating content for like Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you want to think that most people aren't on those platforms to learn. You know, most people are on there for like connection, for inspiration, for entertainment. Uh, and so like even with like YouTube, right, there's ways that we can add elements of storytelling and, and, and stuff in there just to keep it more entertaining for people. But what I find is that what works well in content, whether it's videos or whatever, and this is actually important for it doesn't even matter if you're doing content, you could be doing anything in life, talking to your spouse. It's all about perspective shifting, like those aha moments, getting somebody to see something differently, right? Because you got to think if you're solving a problem right now, it could be for your kids. It could be for your audience and your business. I feel like you're, you're selling selling right now. Yeah. All right. It's the root issue of all of this. Cause we're trying to teach how do you, uh, like sell better, it's but, con- but people don't even, they're scared to sell. They think like it's a bad thing to do. And like, you do it all the time, every day anyway. Yeah, you got to sell everybody. You're selling your kids on cleaning up the room. You're selling right. like your, you know, your, your spouse on what you want for dinner. It's like you're selling your audience on why they should buy your program and or you your actually, products. And if you actually have something that's going to help somebody and you don't want to talk about it or you don't want to mention it or you don't want to sell it, then you're not helping anybody. You're actually being really selfish by being afraid. So because of your own fear of what people are going to think or criticize you, you're going to not say anything, not going to mention it. 
and not help people. Here, here's like a good take on this. This is I don't know if this is a true story. Again, I heard this in a persuasion workshop at four years ago, but it really hit home for me. And it's a it's a short it's a short little story about this man. He was a businessman, and he was in I think South Carolina at a mastermind event. And um, they were on. They had like a lunch break for um, their event. He walked out of the the convention center, and there was like a little neighborhood that was nearby. It's one of the I think it's South Carolina because in the story it was like all these old kind of like front porch style industrial, you know, uh, colonial type houses. And he was walking through the neighborhood, and while he was walking through, he hears this dog in obvious pain, like crying and yelping, and like it, it was very obvious his dog was hurting. And he was a dog lover, so he goes and searches the neighborhood. And in a, within a few minutes, he walks upon this house, and sure enough, he sees his dog on the porch, very loud now, crying, yelping. Next to him is this old man in a rocking chair. And he walks up to the to the old man, looks at the old man, looks at the dog, and says, "Sir, like, what's going on with your dog? Why is he Why is he crying?" The old man looks at the dog, looks at the businessman dead in the eyes, and says, uh, "He's sitting on a nail." And the guy's like, oh my God, like, why doesn't the dog get off the nail? And again, the old man looks at the dog, looks back at the old, uh, the businessman and says, because it'll hurt too much. And so right now in life, our audiences, whoever your audience may be, whether you're, you're, you're marketing to a social media audience, a uh, follower fan base to a church, to your family, people are in pain in general. People are, are suffering in their own ways and they're coping with it, right? People cope with it through various ways. But if you don't sell them on your ideas, if you have a program, if you have a product, if you have a message, if you have something that you know is better for them than what they're currently suffering through, you, is your, it is your God-given right, your gift, your duty to make sure that they get a hold of it, right? Then they make sure they hear it because people are afraid to move. They're afraid that if they do something different and leave that little comfort zone, that bubble they're in, that's protective, their ego, that it's going to be dangerous. It's danger, danger, danger. When in fact, and this is a key to selling for anything, what's the worst case scenario? Right. So one of the ways to get somebody to see something differently is to address a mistake. You can do this in videos. You can do this in any, any kind of communication. And if you can say like, um, because most people don't know they're making a mistake. Like let's use weight losses. It's a very so it's like easy future example. pacing for them. Yeah. Like if this goes absolutely horrible, this is this is where you're going to end up. Yeah, we'll use weight loss as an example because I think it's it's pretty relatable for any scenario. Let's say like uh, you're trying to help somebody lose weight, and they're making a mistake of eating 600 calories a day. You know, and if you're in the fitness space, you're probably like that's incredibly too low for most human beings. Like my my two and a half year old son eats more than that in one sitting, and so it's like. They're not doing it because they're like, I'm going to get, I'm going to wake up and make a mistake today. No, they're taking an action. They think it's going to solve a problem and they believe it to be true. And you can't go and tell somebody, Hey, that's a mistake. Don't do it because they believe that they're doing it for a reason. They maybe believe that eating less is going to help them lose more or that maybe they heard it on a YouTube video and somebody said to do that or or maybe their trainer told them to do that. And they're right. So the re so what we have to do is first address it. Hey, if you're eating you know, under 600 calories, uh, it's a huge mistake. This is why. And they're like, huh? I, I'm doing that. So whatever the mistake is, we address it. And then we want to give them a worst case scenario. Well, that can actually end up like this. You can damage your hormones. You can X, Y, Z, whatever the consequence is. Let's let them know. Like, oh, I don't want to get, wor-. nobody wants to get worse. People are okay being complacent, but, you know, God forbid they get worse. So you let them know it can get worse. And then you're like, so if you actually want to lose the weight, here's what you do. And then you kind of like, now, now you want to like open loop and discredit. And what I mean by that is like, you want to like not make them feel stupid, right? Where it's like, if you've been doing this, you're just plain out dumb. No, you want to be like, you know, in marketing, one of the most powerful so tools. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah. It's like empathy, right? right? It's like, Hey, I get why you're doing this. It's not your fault. It's like, I totally get it. I mean, ultimately everything's your fault, but I could see how you're thinking this way because this is what people have been telling you and respected professionals have been teaching it this way. Exactly. So, it, just, it, is, it is your fault, but, it, but yeah. we have some empathy for you. We're showing empathy first. Because what it does is it lowers the guard for on the ego. Because we're all about that accountability, right? Yeah. I mean, I straight up tell people like a lot of times in videos, it's your fault, right? But 
You know, if you want to do not a good selling point. Yeah, if you want to like not get in a fight with your spouse or if you want to sell something, right. <laughs> then you want to you want to be like you want to like empathize and and then be like and then give a counter example. Like prove it. Don't just say it, prove it. Like I get why you're doing this, but it's actually backwards. Like here's why. And then make a case. Like you got to be the attorney if you want to plant a new idea or a new seed or anything into somebody's head. So I can say, "Hey, you know, um I get why you're doing it this way, but it's actually backwards. In fact, um, you want to learn how to eat right, not just eat quote unquote healthy. And now they're like, eat right. What does that mean? Oh, so here's what you got to do. You got to dial in your calories. You got to get proportions right for fat loss. You got to, you got to get foods that work with your hormones, uh, not against them. They're like, Oh, I haven't been doing things like that. I haven't been focusing on that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can use it in a metaphor. I can use a story about my client, Susie. Right. And now people are like, now they get it. Now they're like, ah. Oh, and now, you know, when I go to make a pitch or a CTA and I'm just like, yo, and so if you want to learn more about, you know, losing this gut fat and doing it the right way so you're not having to literally starve yourself or freaking eat less than my two and a half year old son, then we'll <laughs> do this thing. Send me a message, you know, click here. So what's that? That was a big tip. What, what would you call that tip? If we said number one of the tips was it's your responsibility to sell because you need to help people. This one here. What are you calling that? Shifting perspective. Shifting perspective. More of your, if you're putting out content, if you're putting out advertisements, more of it this day and age should be around per shifting perspectives about getting somebody to just stop for a second and to think, to get them to think for a second and to like, just plant the seed. You don't have to make the sale that day, but if you just plant the seed. Let's do that with, with the video example. So what's the worst case scenario if pe <laughs> people are just not following the right kind of template or plan, or they're just winging their videos. They're, they're, they're producing stuff, but it's really not leading to anything. It's not getting likes or engagement or comments or sales or leads. What's the worst case scenario? They're going to end up with like an overworked, underpaid content creator versus an actual CEO. They're going to end up paying people, whether it's them or paying a team to put out content, to put the time into doing it, but they're going to not be getting the they're fruit. not going to be getting the, the they're not getting the fruits. They're not getting the fruits of it, and this is very common. I, I have many, um, I have many people that like with huge. Like I know you guys have a huge following. I've got like personal brand influencers that reach out to me that they look like they have it down, right? Like four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand followers, on, like Instagram and stuff. But like they're making like five k, and <laughs> you know it's like they hit a point where they're like crap. Like I built my following teaching and doing all this stuff, but nobody's buying, right? And the reason is because they're not shifting perspectives. They're not getting people to see things a different way. And so it's like, you know, this day and age, people are making content for likes, for followers and, you know, for the comments and things like that. And sure, there's strat there, there, you do want to focus on Those things are almost like that. Like visibility strategies, ways to get your content traffic. seen by more people to yeah, get more traffic, but that doesn't necessarily convert into anything. Doesn't change people's lives necessarily. It doesn't. Not at all. Doesn't necessarily get them in your funnel or leads or sales for the th products you have that can help people. Yeah, because all they're going to do is like, the, yeah, you get a follow, and yeah, you may be giving out great information for people, and that's awesome. But at least my belief is that. You can't really cash that stuff into, you can't take your, you know, your Instagram following out and show it to the teller at the bank and say, oh, look at my, Trade the likes in for yeah, somebody. you know, <laughs> and you can't truly impact people. Can you give somebody some good tips and help them lose a few pounds or help them make some money or, you know, help them get a better relationship with God? Yes, you can. In some seeds you're planting out there, I think. But you but can't truly sure. transform somebody on social media, especially with how distracting it is, you know? Something we also want to mention, and I see this be a, uh, I see this as a, I don't know if it's a mistake, more so as a problem. If you like look at social media, and don't do this right now if you're listening, you know, continue listening. But like after this, like go take out your phone, just be observant, go through like Instagram or YouTube, it doesn't matter a platform, and just scroll for a couple of minutes and just look at what you see. Right. There's such there's going to be a mix depending on who you are. Um, if you're like me, you've probably blocked out and deleted anybody that's negative. But there's going to be like a lot of negativity for a lot of people, a lot of fear, a lot of scarcity, a lot of like, look at my life type posts. It's all of this like facade and this fake news on social media right now. And you're competing with that. You're competing. You're competing with like, you know, maybe, uh, you, you know, Mary's dog just died or, um, you know, X, Y, Z's 
dropping a bomb or the recessions here or this or that and it's like people are big filled. stuff big stuff yeah it's like hey look at these protests look at this most amazing fit person you've ever seen doing like triple flips in the air look at this person on an awesome vacation you should buy bitcoin it's yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah and then your dms are getting hit up with like you know all and it's like it's 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 chaos on social media and so like you everybody's immune everybody is is in it and so if you're the creator and if you're the business owner it's just understanding that like it's different now in 2022 than it was just you know, five, 10 years ago, even 2020, do you know how many people had nothing to do and started making TikToks and stuff? It yeah. Like, so people blew up during that time just with entertainment factor, mm-hmm. but, but still monetizing, it's a whole nother story. Yeah. And that's, that's like w- where you come in. Yeah. I, I, like, I like to look at a, like the gym analogy, right? Where back in the day, it was just like, you know, your big box gyms, you got like Bally's and then like fitness came around and you had like gold's gym. There wasn't much competition. There was just only so many gyms you can go to. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, Curse Fitness came on the scene and like just wrecked things for like Bally's and they, they took, right, they market share and they became, and then all of a sudden it like revolutionized, like now there was like all of these boutique gyms, like Orange Theory Fitnesses and then there were some, franchises. Some super, there were some nicer high-end ones and there were your medium ones for like 40 bucks. Then Planet Fitness came in for like $10. Yeah. And all of a sudden competition got like insane. And, and then all of a sudden nobody wanted to go to the gym anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because like, there was all these different... <laughs> options well social media is similar like you know i know i know guys like in in um i mean you look at like vince you know uh back in the day from at least what i know like you know with the youtube channel it was just there wasn't as, as much comp- like now it's still very doable but you're you now it's different the dynamics are different and the way you put out content has changed Right. It's like the principles are still in place. Like the principles of of great marketing and great videos are the same. Right. You got to have a solid headline. You got to have a solid hook. You've got to. Right. But the claims you can't. It's like if you're making the same claims as everybody for making the same content. Like if you search YouTube right now, how do how do I lose 10 pounds? Oh my God, like do it. (laughs) Abundant. How do you stand out? Right. And that's where positioning comes into play. Right. This is where like really being able to position yourself. You know, um, and if you could stack that with some consistency, because people just they don't stick with things. They, no, they give up like really quickly. And and even if you made it somehow like one to two years, which amazing, because most people are never going to get that far. But most people just they get burnt out. They lose the passion for it. They don't want to do it. It's not working fast enough. So like if you can combine what you're saying with some long term consistency, yeah. man. it's like a, an old mentor told me, he's like, yeah, it could take you uh, 10 years to get to a million. And I was like, dang, I listened to that dude. I shouldn't have. <laughs> 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 I'm like, gosh, man, that's rough. But yeah, it, t- it does take consistency. And um, but positioning is it, it plays a huge factor now. Right. It's like, why you? And there's different ways you can position yourself in the marketplace, right? Um, it comes down to your your what I call like your unique vehicle. You can consider that like your unique mechanism or your USP. Like why you? Like if if is what you're doing is probably not unique to the marketplace at this point. Um, so why you? And so your unique selling proposition is one, and or I, I call it your unique vehicle. It's like if you're trying to help somebody. If somebody has a problem, say they're overweight and they want to not be overweight anymore, there's so many vehicles they can take. There's different diets they can do. There's different workout. There's different whatever. There's so many things they can do. Why you? And it's just like coming up with maybe a framework uh, around like your nutrition, like philosophies or your workout philosophies. It could be similar to what other people are doing. You just give it like a cool name for what you're calling it. And then you're going to relate to people differently than other people are. Like you're going to attract people just because of your personality, maybe Mm because you're not, not as energetic or more energetic, whatever it is, people are going to relate to different people that are potentially even teaching similar content. So you want to differentiate yourself, but even if it's a little similar to other stuff that's out there, there's still people that want to hear it from you or they don't hear it from something rubs them wrong with those other guys. But when it comes from you, they can take it in and actually use it. Yeah. And there's two, there's two things that I think will be super helpful for people on that. The first is what I call a backstory, right? The backstory is a thing that you can implement into your, into your, um, entire marketing. Uh, an example of a backstory could literally be anything, 
where for me, American Ninja Warrior is how I, I, I how did I, I, I was got a few, you got a Ninja Warrior story, the electrocution story. And I use all of them for right. my fitness. Right. And so I was like, okay, I was on this platform. How can I make the best of it? Well, I use it as a backstory. So not only, uh, did I position myself as the belly fat guy? Right. But what I did, I was the belly fat ninja guy. And so when somebody was like, Hey, I, I need to hire somebody to help lose the belly. They were like, let's hire the, that, there's that belly fat ninja guy. <laughs> Literally I would be on the phone and like, the belly fat ninja guy. you know, I'd hear like the, like the husband in the background, like, honey, uh, like who are you? Like, and she'd be like, Hey, I'm on the phone with the belly fat ninja guy. Like literally <laughs> I, like, I made that an archetype. That's right? awesome. And so I would use it in stories. I'd bring it into my, weave it into my content. And it was by design. It wasn't because I was like, let me just talk about this. I was like, heck no, I'm going to use this to like make money. And for you, th those are kind of like obvious ones that you probably could pull right away and be like, this sticks out. But for a lot of us, we think our story is um, not that big of a deal but you're telling someone else, what's the thing that they're like, really? And they ask you again, like, what what happened there? The part the part that to you is just part of the story could really be the thing that's your story. Anything, man. I have I have a, a woman that she wanted to do in a professional speaking tour, um, and she never done it before, and she was afraid to speak on camera, and so uh, we use that as her backstory. Let's talk about it to your audience as you weave it in. Say, hey, like I was terrified on camera like a week ago. Now I'm doing lives and my, my, my goal is to do and like weaving this in because it makes you human. It makes you different. So now when they're looking to hire somebody like she was helping somebody not with weight loss. Right. It had nothing to do with her business. She didn't think to share it. But I was like, tell people like you're trying to go speak. That's people are afraid to do that. You know, and another dude was leaving his job. He's leaving a six figure career to go in on his business. And, um, I was like, tell people about it. And like, you know, and there's so many different things. I mean, you, heck you could be planning a family vacation, <laughs> like weave it because you want like, Oh, it's that family guy. That's you, that family so, woman. So you keep mentioning like, kind of like <laughs> these different nicknames and my friend, Sean Hadsel, he calls himself the ripped grandpa. Like, does it help to have an archetype? Yeah. Yeah. Like have some kind of nickname or character or something that you're kind of getting people to remember you by like someone's first and last name may not be that easy to remember versus versus like the ripped grandpa or something. Yeah. I think it's super helpful to have, like I call them like the archetypes that your social media archetypes where, uh, you want to be, um, you want to become known for something. And I actually learned this concept from Vince is I remember he said that he was skinny Vinny. Yeah. And the skinny guy savior and skinny, skinny guy Vinny. Savior. Yeah. And, and I was always thinking like, what can I be? And so that was a lesson I took away from him. And I was like, what, what is like, what, what can I be? And I always thought about that. Like, what can I be? And, and that's where like, I was like, hmm, I have all these stories that I can use. I could uh, be something Viking or the Swedish something. For me. <laughs> the Swedish <laughs> Viking. Yeah. No, it's gotta be something in between there. I don't know what. The other thing that somebody can do, um, to your point here is think about what you stand for and what you stand against. We were talking about this before we went on the podcast where what do you like, what are you adamantly against? It could be something that's industry wide where you're just like, I am completely against this. And what do you stand for? Right. An example, an example is, um, could be like, uh, so it's like never ending. Take take ab training, for example, and you say like you're against crunches and sit ups. So yeah. How to get abs without crunches and sit ups. And if it's something and, and here's where people go wrong. You hear people say you got to be polarizing and it's like people just go be polarizing to, because they somebody told them to be polarizing. Right. But it's only works if it's real. And so if, if you're adamantly against ab training, you think it's a complete waste of time and it's like you believe that to your core. When you infuse that, like I call these rants where you just go on and it's like a, it's a strategic rant. You're not just going to rant to tell people about your pet peeves. And that's a good point. It should never be your pet peeves. Don't complain to people. Nobody wants to hear your pet peeves and complaints, right, pet peeves. right? But you, but when you stand for something that you know is common in the industry where people are doing this thing and you're like, I, that's wrong. You know, and another example could be in the, like the, the weight loss industry, the dieting, like everybody's restrictive dieting. And it's like, if you believe that's wrong, stand up and voice it. Like, don't be afraid. Well, what are people afraid that, um, controversy or ruffling feathers or judgment, having yeah. other people kind of argue or debate with you. Oh yeah. Then, you know, they don't want to get well, involved in it. that, but that's, what's going to make you stand out. Like, don't be afraid of it. Well, lean into that. What you're going to do is you will attract, what you're going to do is repel people. That, you know, that, there's going to be people that leave and you're going to see like a dip, but then other people are going to really like 
that, they're going to get attracted and they're going to have a much stronger connection to you than that audience of kind of lukewarm people. 100%. Yeah. And I feel like that makes a big difference. And I feel like, like I can give somebody the perfect content strategy, the perfect video sales strategy. I can teach somebody the exact skills. I can say, here's how to do hooks. Here's how to do CTAs. Here's how to use storytelling. But it's got to be authentic. And, or, or, and oh. it's got to, it's got to come from this place, like the missing ingredient to this. And we'll use, I'm using quotes here to become a micro influencer is to add your own opinions. Like people are afraid to do this, rightfully so, because it's like you get canceled. Just yeah, it's like <laughs> what, what are people going to say? What are people going to think? Blah blah blah. People blah. will be outside your driveway rioting. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, like if you really want to make change, hey, we're talking about health here. We're not in politics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, some people do get into that stuff, right. and I, you know, it's to each their own of what they want to bring onto their platforms, but. It's like when you can bring your own real opinions into your into your marketing, into your content, into your speaking, into your messaging as a whole, that stands you apart because now yeah. people have a reason to follow you, right? And then you're getting away from this modeling and copying everybody else because you're adding your own. You're following a format, which there's a teachable format to this, like we're talking about. Yeah. But be real. Like something that I am... Um, um, I'm against now because I just, my experience, I am like, why would somebody spend hours and hire a whole setting team to do like outbound DMs for, you know, 200 to a thousand DMs a day and you're paying a team and it's like, now you're managing a team of like these setters and salespeople. I'm like, why not just get better at like the inbound? Why not just get better at and there's like, is there a right and wrong? No, I know. So the outbound is going out and messaging people that look like people like, that'd be interested. It's like, and the inbound is people that message you from a call to action. Exactly. And there's, is there a right or wrong? No, but I am against it because from my experience, one seems colder. One is colder. And there's, I know people that have like seven, eight figure businesses from all outbound DMs, cold DMs, cold calling, things like that. And it works. I did it and I was just like, I had a setting team. I was just like, I feel like a boiler room. I was like, I feel like a boiler room, not like a transformation company. And I was like, it's not me. Sure. Is it wrong to me? Yeah. Well, does it work? Sure. Go do it if you want to. But for me, I am against it because I've learned how to now create backend systems. I've created like inbound where I can bring like people came to you because they were interested and they reached out to you. And then, and now you've got a process to, to, yeah. to work with them, which is different than kind of going out and cold calling people and during dinner and stuff. Yeah. And so we, <laughs> like our team measures, our team measures like inbound leads. So at the end of each week, we have a weekly debrief where we're like, how many inbound leads came in? And like, I'll have my, my Facebook uh, group guy, which is our you know primary platform right now. Um, Facebook groups, but I'll be like, how many email leads came in? Or we'll look at the pod podcast. How many came from the podcast? How many came in from this? And we, we measure that. And if we're like, oh, this week we had 50 inbound leads. Um, but the week before we had a hundred, we may be like, Hmm. Right. So like, like, okay. Uh, what do we need to improve? All right. And so it's con this constant, like, how do we get more inbound leads? So at this point for us, it's like, we know that as long as we do this thing, we'll get like, you know, 50, 100, 200 inbound leads coming in. And then we have our sales systems in the background, like where we run work, we do workshops or we'll do. Um, yeah. That's what I was going to ask you because what we started off as like three tips we must have given like 10 oh, by yeah. now, like this is almost like a workshop we're doing on the podcast, but we've had your workshop. We paid you to come in and do a workshop. You've had another workshop. Do you have any coming up soon? I do. Yeah. I have uh, Cause, I mean, we're starting to get into the nitty gritty of this now. Do you have something people could attend or how do they how do they get more information about that? Uh, so the best it depends on where they are. I think the easiest thing for people to do is um, they can either uh, uh, follow me on Facebook and just reach out. Or if they want to go to www.monetizemylives.com, monetizemylives.com, there is an option to download a, um, a free video planner. Pretty much what it does, I give strategic topics for people that want to, um, and the topics are universal. Um, anybody can apply the topics no matter what business they're in. 
And I also give a, um, a cheat sheet on how I structure videos. That's at the website? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a downloadable thing. That will give them the access point. So if they want to join my Facebook group, and that's where we're... So that's your one call to action. We don't want to dilute this by mentioning yeah, the School of Impact rule. podcast and all the other, your Instagram handle. We don't want to give too many, right? We'll yeah, just list, you, we'll list those below. Yeah, if you go, if, <laughs> if, if, if you go get, if you, if you download the guide, you'll be on my email list and you'll have the opportunity to join my Facebook group. And at that point... Like I'm promoting the podcast, so if you're a pod, if you like listening to the podcast, you can, you know, you can check out our and podcast. It's way more topics like this. You're you're talking to people that do video. Well, yeah, we're it's 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 become like really impact based. So I like to bring people on that are about which you know I can have you on, which is uh, about like creating more impact in different ways, right? So uh, it's largely to do with like you know um, video sales and. You know, things about connecting with your audience, captivating your audience, converting your audience. We talk a lot about that, but we also bring, you know, guest experts on to talk about other things that have to do with impact, you know? Everything's impact. Yeah. Awesome, man. Which, yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, if we want to kind of like end this off, you know, you know, for anybody listening right now, um, which, by the way, if you're listening, I want to just give you a massive appreciation because you're one of the few that have a longer attention span than three seconds. So like, if you're still listening right now, I want to say like, you're one of the few, you're one of the good ones. You're one of the ones that will be successful because most people can't listen or for anything for longer than three seconds. So, you know, shoot a message to us and just let us know that you listen to this because, uh, just, just shout out. Like I, I have a lot of respect for you. Um, one of the things here that you could take away, uh, one of the last takeaways here is that uh, this is a belief that we are all put on here on this earth with a gift. Some of us may have realized that gift. Some of us haven't. We all have a message inside of us, right? Everybody has a message, whether you know it or not, or you're clear on it or not, or, or whatever it may be. I believe that your message contains a light, an inner light. And the belief here is that if you look around with all like the fear, especially right now, the scarcity, the negativity, the recession is COVID that all this craziness, there's a lot of darkness in, in the world. And, you know, now more than ever, people are suffering with depression, anxiety. Uh, they're living in different parts of fear. They're drinking too much. They're, you know, they're just, they're, it's not great, right? I believe that if you have a message that is a light and it's a beacon of light, that when you learn how to speak it out, when you can learn what it takes, whether you want to grow a business or you want to impact a church or whatever you are going after right now, when you learn and you speak up and you are the one that says, you know what? I may be scared. I may be fearful myself, but I'm going to lead by example. I'm not going to quit on my dreams. I'm not going to give up. And you choose to stand up and speak out that inner message. It has this enthusiasm, this passion, this light to it. I believe to my core that when you do this, if enough of us collectively can do this and speak out this light, this message, that we will make a major impact in this world, right? That's why I made the transition from fitness into what I do now, because it's, I believe God put like, this is my purpose. I, uh, and I, I recognize it with a boulder <laughs> for another podcast, but I was like, I, this is my purpose to help people speak their, their inner lights out to the world. So just, just know that, like, if you have something, maybe you're fearful now. Um, you know, one of my hopes is that this episode, you know, our chit chat here gave you some kind of inspiration, gave you some kind of, you know, hope, gave you some kind of lessons that you can take away. And, you know, if you, if you, if there's one thing to take away, don't take no for an answer, right? You're going to get told no. There's going to be fears that pop up. But if you really want to make impact, if you really want to make a change, if you really want to fulfill a vision, a passion, a dream, you got to go all in and you got to be willing to have the do whatever it takes mentality. And I know you can. Hey Amen. I love that, Jason. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your light with me, with you. And, uh, you know, being fearful, it's normal. But we want you to be strong. We want you to be courageous. And most importantly, never give up. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.